Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our last talk in this room for today and for this year. So let me introduce to you Leka from Spotify. Let's try this one. Better? Yay. OK. Uh, all right. So I'm Lekha, senior engineer at Spotify. I'm here to talk about system design. Uh, and system design at a very specific stage of a product's life cycle. So teams like mine at Spotify, we work on the zero to one product discovery, early exploration phase of ideas. Uh, we don't own complex systems in production. We don't serve to the entire Spotify user base. What we own is problem statements, user needs. What we own is sentences like, uh, how can we customize the Spotify experience for the India market so we can launch Spotify in India? What we own is sentences like, oh, we see a gap between Spotify's search experience in Western markets with that in India, Indonesia, Japan, Brazil. How do we fill this gap? How do we make Spotify search better for these users? Uh, and my current team at Spotify right now uh, we own uh, a user need, like how do we incentivize paid subscriber growth in Spotify's emerging markets. Uh, so our job is to take these ideas, uh, take, take these user needs, turn them into a bunch of ideas, build something quickly, put it in front of our users, test these ideas. Some of them may work, and we iterate on them, and we scale them, and we roll them out to big production systems for the entire Spotify use base. Uh, and then some of them don't work, and then we sunset those systems. And trust me, I have sunset as many systems as I've built in my four years at Spotify. Uh, so just to set some context, I'm going to fast forward a few months from this uh, problem statement to what we built and what we just rolled out. Uh, so what my team built is the Spotify rewards experience. So it's the f the, the new tab on the Spotify app that says rewards, and a user is offered a challenge. And a challenge in this case is spend 10 days on the premium mini plan. It's this plan that you buy in one day and seven day increments. So spend 10 days on this plan in a one month period. And if you do that, you get a reward, which is a discount on your next purchase. Or it could be free, free, free days uh, on your next uh, premium plan. Uh, so this is the kind of like we went from how do we incentivize uh, premium growth to building this specific experience. Uh, and this is where the approach to system design, the approach to building technical systems can be very different in the zero to one stage of a product as opposed to, you know, a more uh, mature technical system. Uh, and that's what I'm here to share with you today, ideas and lessons and best practices that we've toyed around with as a team and things that have worked really well for us or lessons that we've learned on how to approach system design. Uh, first and foremost, the time is fixed and the scope is flexible. And this can be very different from how we typically think of things. Uh, the time to market for an early stage idea is the most important thing. The sooner you can get it in front of users, the sooner you will get actual actionable, valuable feedback, and then you figure out the next steps of your product. Now, we've done this as a team in two different ways. The first was, even before we designed anything, even before we did system design, we said we're going to ship this in a quarter. And that felt crazy at the time. What do you mean you're going to ship in a quarter? You don't even know what you're going to build. Your requirements are in flux. But it worked. When we made this prophecy of shipping in a quarter, what ended up happening is that 
every decision that you make, every trade-off that you make comes with that mindset of we want to ship this in a quarter. So there were things that we intentionally didn't do. We held off on building a rewards platform from the get-go and in instead build a rewards experience so we can put it in front of users and figure out which are the dimensions that we would platformize on in the longer run if this idea was successful. Um, and you end up looking at every requirement from the same lens as well. So we ended up asking questions like, OK, how many markets are we going to ship this to? What kind of plans do you need to be on to get a reward? What kind of rewards do you want? And the answer to each of those questions helped us narrow down our scope and pick the right technology choices, pick the right architecture patterns to solve our problems. Our database is only in one region, for example, because the user base on the premium mini plan is only in the Asian market. Uh, now, we did this idea of time box not just on the project itself, but even on the act of system design. So we said, we're going to start system design in two weeks' time, and it's going to last one week, and we're going to have a text pack at the end of it. That was before we started designing anything. Uh, and this idea, to be honest, is stolen from another concept called the design sprint. So the design sprint is something that started at Google Ventures, and it's something that has been used by hundreds of companies, hundreds of products. We use it a lot at Spotify as well. And the idea of the design sprint is for product managers, designers, engineers, stakeholders to get together for a week of focused work. And they start from fuzzy requirements or a user problem space, and they narrow it down and pick one specific problem they want to solve. And then they narrow it down to one specific experience that they want to build to solve that problem. And at the end of the week, they test it out with their users. And then after that, they just build, build, build. So we as a team took this idea of the design sprint and said, hey, can we apply it to the software system design process as well? Can we time box it to a week and say, we're going to start with a list of requirements, and we're going to end with a precise system design of what we're going to build? And it works because it makes you prioritize what to focus on. It makes you prioritize the big picture before you start going into the low-level details. Um, and it, it helps you really avoid all those rabbit hole binding discussions about something that may not even matter in the long run. Um, the next key thing for us was that the requirements are absolutely negotiable. So the first version of rewards that came to our table as engineers, it contained a challenge with multiple actions and multiple stages. And the only way to keep that challenge fresh would be to keep adding new actions. The reward was a lottery between multiple types of discounts and uh, freebies. And as engineers, we said, this is neither minimal, because at the end of the day, your learning goal is can we bring gamification and rewards to Spotify? And does the idea of rewards work? And there's so many moving parts that if your experiment fails, you don't know which of these moving parts was the reason for it. And you'd just keep A-B testing variations of it, still trying to prove uh, your original learning goal. Um, and the second thing was that this was neither viable because we had that mindset of we want to ship in a quarter. And if you're trying to build a system that has all these moving parts, it's definitely going to take you more than that. Uh, so really like having that time box and then having this mindset of your requirements being absolutely negotiable helps you approach system design in a way that you cut scope don't cut corners we're in a large software organization here and we have certain quality standards that every system even experimental ones need to uh, follow uh, and we're, we're calling other production services, other services are calling us, so we have certain SLOs that we need to meet. So we can't really, we're not in a place to uh, cut corners, but what we can do is be very intentional about scope and be very intentional about cutting scope when it doesn't directly translate into our learning goals. Uh, the third important lesson for us was to map out external systems before we start designing our own. So within Spotify for us, this means, you know, we're a product discovery team. We don't really own search, the premium systems, recommendations, user authentication. These are owned by different teams. And the more we know about these systems and their limitations and their capabilities, the more it allows us to tailor our solution to the constraints of those systems. And these are really, these could be your build versus buy decisions. Sometimes there's something that you can use out of the box and save time. Sometimes you have to build something yourself because you know there's a missing capability. But being very intentional about these choices and mapping out those integration points before you design your own system is absolutely critical to whether you can get something out to your users quickly. 
and of course, there is a place for platformization. There is a place for driving change and you know, pushing teams to build those mi missing capabilities for use cases like yours. And that's the long game, and we do that as well. But if you're a scrappy team trying to get an experience in front of users quickly, then you need to first draw out these external systems. And then at that point, your system is a black box, and that's only when you start designing your own system. The next big lesson for us was we do system design as a group. It's collaborative. There are no silos. There's, it's not that there's two senior engineers doing system design in a room, and then they write a doc, and then they share it out. And you might give some feedback, but that's that. Everyone's doing system design together in that one week. It's the highest priority for everyone in the team at the time. And there's a few things that end up happening when you do system design this way. Firstly, it's an upfront cost. But it's a cost that's worth paying, because what ends up happening if a few people do system design is that later on, when people start building, they're going to ask the same questions. You're going to go through the same cycles of sharing knowledge, sharing context on why a certain choice was made as opposed to the alternatives. And so if you pay this upfront cost and you have everyone on the table, the moment you finish system design, you're all aligned on what exactly you're trying to build, and you agree with all the decisions made and this, this, the design that you've committed to. And after that, you just build, build, build without looking back. The other thing that happens is, of course, you focus on the big picture. You focus on making the most important decisions first. Uh, you avoid resume-driven de design. That's a term I heard this morning that resonated a lot. You make sure you're making choices because they make sense for your end goal uh, and not because it's some fancy buzzword or fancy piece of tech. Um, what also ends up happening as a side effect is that uh, you create a lot of T-shapedness in the team. So you have Android engineers asking questions about backend. You have web engineers trying to understand how the data pipelines work. Uh, and you also grow and mentor your junior engineers who may not ever have done system design before, but they're not just part of the outcome of it and the decisions, but the reasoning behind the decisions and the discussions and the choices that were made. Uh, and at the end of it, like it's also a team building activity. We have fun with it. We look forward to it. It's almost like an offsite or uh, it, it creates a lot of bond between the team to design a system together that you're going to work on for the next few weeks or months, and it becomes your own system. Uh, and finally, be very intentional about the formats you use to run these meetings. So if we're saying we're going to do system design for a week, and at the end of it, we want an exact specification of what we will build, think about how you run these meetings. So there's a few different formats that we've toyed with that works really well for us. Uh, one of them is architecture golf. Uh, so this comes from Klarna. And the idea behind architecture golf is you have a team of engineers. You set up a rotation. It's like a game. You each have a turn, and you keep going around. And when it's your turn, you start with a blank slate. Each person puts in one thing to the design. They put in one box or one arrow or one piece of detail to the design. What you could also do with your turn is change something that's already there as a way of challenging a choice that's made and sparking some discussion. What you could do is also ask a question. So if you're not sure why a certain box or arrow was drawn by the person before you, you use your chance to ask about it and learn about it. And again, this is a way of making system design collaborative, making sure everybody gets a voice and everybody gets an opinion. And at the end of system design, you all agree with the design that you've created together. Um, the other format that we've used that worked really well for us is called Crazy Eights. And this is stolen from the original design sprint process. So the idea of Crazy Eights, again, is that everyone's participating. But in the beginning, you put eight minutes on the clock, and each person works uh, individually. And they come up with as many ideas as possible to solve the problem or ideas for parts of the problem. And, and at that point, the motive is quantity over quality. So you just want to put every idea out there without being too critical of it. Then you do another round where you steal from each other's ideas and you evolve your solution. And what you start to see is that everyone's contributing to the solution, but you also start to converge towards one final system design picture that you end up uh, locking in at the end of your system design. Um, so really, that's uh, it. Uh, Time is fixed, scope is flexible, requirements are negotiable more than external systems are, more than resources are. 
uh, do system design collaboratively as a group, as a team, make it a team building activity uh, as much as a system building activity. And finally, be very intentional about the formats you use and how you run your meetings uh, and really find formats that allow each person to participate and contribute to system design. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's what I have for you. If I don't know if we have time for questions. No, we don't. All right. <laughs> find me later. <laughs>